Hey guys, it's Noah. Welcome to a bit of a different video today. Um, this is going to be a reaction video, actually, as you can see by both the title and what's on my screen right now. Um, this is this video is the first rule of Pokemon, I believe, by Wolfie VGC. Yes, the first rule of Pokemon. Um, so I started playing competitive Pokemon in Sword and Shield on my Switch, as you can see right here. Um, if you guys want to see um, Pokemon Sword and Shield content on the channel, let me know. I would love to play it, and I'm going to play it soon. Um, just recently, it's been a lot of grinding, and uh, I haven't really been able to like do much in terms of the actual gameplay. It's just been a lot of collecting Pokemon for my Pokedex, so I can shiny hunt and uh, do other stuff like that. So if you guys want to see more of that stuff on the channel, then leave a like and let me know in the comments below. Uh, but this video is based on competitive Pokemon, which I will also be doing a lot of in the future. Um, I've been building a lot of teams. That's another thing I've been grinding towards. Um, but I will use rental teams um, in videos as well. That's probably what I'll start doing very soon um, in terms of Pokemon. I love Pokemon. My first Pokemon game was Pokemon Diamond, a little bit of background. Um, I loved it, and I've played pretty much every Pokemon game since then that's come out. Well, main series. Main series Pokemon games since then. So, um, But Wolfie is the 2016 Pokemon World Champion. So he... Yeah, he, he won the World Championships in 2016. Um, excellent Pokemon player. One of the best in the world uh, consistently every year. Um, he, he and Aaron Cybertron Zing, which I'll link both of their channels in the description below. They are two of the guys that I kind of look up to when it comes to competitive Pokemon. So when Wolfie released this video, I, I wanted to take a look at it just to see what it was all about and uh, see if I could glean any knowledge from it. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it and see what it's about. So there I was, thinking about um, this past weekend, which was, for those of you who don't know, uh, it was the Players Cup 2. Now the Players Cup 2 is kind of our, why is it, why is it doing this weird thing over my shoulder? Okay. Um, just to clarify, I didn't have a team ready by Players Cup 2 and I was out of town. So most of my friends live in Virginia Beach um, in the USA, um, which is about seven hours from where I live. So. Uh, I was on a trip there, so I didn't have great Wi-Fi, and I didn't have a team ready by then, so I didn't participate in the Players 2 qualifiers. Um, I liked the team I had, but it was a bit, like, the team I was trying to put together was a bit rushed, and so I just didn't end up uh, putting a team in, but, but yeah. Um, the Players' Cup 2 is kind of, the well, the Players' Cup in general is kind of the replacement um, for an online, for a circuit, uh, while we can't have in-person events. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the way the tournament is set up, um, this has been both times, the first phase is a Wi-Fi tournament. Players play in, like an open Wi-Fi tournament, and you can enter. And the top 256 from each region um, advance. Now, uh like I said, I didn't play in the qualifier because um, because I didn't have a team ready. So yeah. Um, if people like uh, don't want to play after that, that's fine. Um, but a lot of people will advance from there into the 256 person bracket divided by region. So um, I believe there's four regions: uh, regions North America, uh, Latin. Um, Europe and APAC, I believe, are the four regions. Um, yeah, so basically, play you have 256 of the e, the top finishing people from each of these regions put into a double elimination bracket. Now, double elimination is not a format we use very often in Pokemon. We normally play Swiss, but that's the format they're using for this seated based on finishes. So Swiss is basically like you play a bunch of different people within the round, and if you make a certain level of record within that Swiss, within the, I guess... Round robin, I guess, is another way you could say it. Uh, if you if you get, achieve a certain record, then you will advance to the top cut. So, um, from there, people play down until there's only four left for each region. Two hundred fifty six down to four, leaving a total of sixteen people. Um, and then from there, it's a final tournament. Now, for those of you who don't know, the second iteration of this tournament structure happened. Um, the the first part of the bracket phase happened yesterday. From when I'm posting this. Um, it's the uh, the 256 down to currently 16 people in each region. Um, and the uh, 60 people will play down to four people next weekend. Now, I actually participated in this tournament, and I think actually we can take a look at my... Let's see. So we can actually take a look at my... Uh, where is it? This? I think this should work. Fresh. Um, we can take a look a little bit at the run that I had. Um, I... Let's see if I can find it. Somewhere around here. Um, just before we get into Wolfie's bracket, I just want to clarify, um, this tournament was played, the qualifier was, was played with VGC Series 5 from 2020, so 
your Cinderaces, Dragapults, Rillabooms, Togekiss, those were all legal, but the legendaries that are introduced in the Crown Tundra, like Landorus and Tapu Fini, were not yet illegal, so I um, just wanted to clarify that. But in the 264 down to 16, this, this tournament that Wolfie is talking about now, um, those legendary Pokemon are legal, so I believe I saw his team and he had Regieleki and Moltres and maybe one other, so... So, basically, uh, and, sorry, I'll zoom in a little bit. I can't really zoom in properly. Okay, well, zooming doesn't really work with this for some reason, but um, I won 2 I won 2 I won 2 I won 2 and then I won 2 1. And now this is where we currently are with the, the, the top. So, as you can see, Wolfie's an incredible Pokemon player. Um, I believe that was five games that he just listed, and he dropped one game out of, what would that be, 11 that he played? Incredible. I mean, the guy's just crazy. When he has a good team built, he's an incredible Pokemon player. Um, you can see that by any of his videos. Like I said, go watch him. He's in the description below. 16 match. So um, that's that's basically what happened. Um, and here's the team that I uh, ended up bringing. And I, I wanted to talk a little bit about some kind of like the philosophy behind this, right? Because I know that there's a lot of people who are interested in Pokemon, interested in getting better at Pokemon. But it can be hard, to, kind of hard to like pinpoint certain specific things that you can be doing um, better or worse. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about kind of my philosophy going into this tournament and following uh, kind of a, a fundamental rule that I think will help a lot of people who are trying to play Pokemon. And so be Before he gets into this, um, I just want to point out his team is extremely metagame dependent, metagame defining. That's the word I'm going for. Metagame defining. Um, Moltres, Regilecki, Tapufini, Kartana, Dusclops, Glastrier, I believe. If we go to peakalytics.com. Uh, okay, so Tapu Fini's... Here, let's look at Wolfie's team real quick. Uh, he's got Glary, Moltres, Regilecki, Tapu Fini, Kartana, and Glastrier, and Dusclops. So Tapu Fini, first overall in usage. Uh, Regilecki is at fifth overall, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, Regilecki's fifth overall in usage. Um, Glastrier's sixth. And Moltres Galar is eighth. Uh, Kartana's nine... Uh, Kartana is then, what, nine, ten, eleven... 12 for Kartana? Yeah, 12 for Kartana. Um, and then Dusclops is down here. It's the second Trick Room setter behind Cresselia. So, Wolfie's team is extremely metagame defining. Oh, my camera went out. Okay, I'm good now. But yeah, Wolfie's team is extremely metagame defining. And with this kind of team, it's. It, he's going to be very strong. If you pair a, a very strong player like Wolfie with a very strong team, such as this one, uh. The results for the opponents are very disastrous, as you can see. Ended up going 10 and 1 throughout this uh, double elimination tournament. So, um. I've said this for a while. I don't even know if it's an original thought or if I took it from somebody else. But in my opinion, the first rule when you're playing Pokemon is no bad Pokemon, right? Um, it sounds pretty straightforward. Why would you want a bad Pokemon on your team when you can have good Pokemon? But it's a little bit trickier in practice. Um, effectively, what the rule means, in fact, like, is it's, it's, it's basically calling out how in Pokemon, like, because you have to choose your characters like this, um, not all Pokemon are created equal. Some are better than others, right? And the goal of a Pokemon team is for it to be doing as much of the work, as much of the heavy lifting for you as it can, right? So that you can take it easy when you're playing. Right before this ad break here, I want to point out, um, the teams I try to build always try to adhere by this rule, but sometimes I use some off-meta picks. I would say off-meta picks aren't necessarily bad Pokemon, but if there's definitely a Pokemon that does something better, then use it. Um, for instance, I'm using Excadrill right now in a Sandrush team. I might switch to Dracovish because Dracovish might do Excadrill's job better. Um, that might be an example of something that Wolfie would be talking about um, in terms of off-meta picks. So. so that, like, your team is giving you the tools to win and, and putting you into positions where winning is not, like, super hard. Because realistically, you can, win with, you can win with any Pokemon. You can win with any team. Um, maybe not every game, but you, you can win some games with, with pretty much anything. Um, and so, yeah. But the, the goal, of course, for a team is, is for the team to be doing as much of the work as possible for you. So, when I was going into this tournament, I was building with my friend Aaron Trailer, um, and we kept considering all these, like, different Pokemon, right? Um, we considered Mamoswine at one point, we considered a couple other, like Nihiligo, for example. Um, and, like, a lot of these Pokemon are Pokemon that have potential, right? I think Mamoswine, Nihilego, I really think Nihilego has like a ton of potential this format, for example. Um, however, I wasn't confident that it was a good Pokemon. Um, what I
I think one of the biggest things, and what he's kind of said here a couple times, is he wasn't confident that it was a good Pokemon. He hadn't used it really that much. And he, they were testing, obviously, he and Aaron Trailer, but the more confident you are in a Pokemon, I think the better you're going to do with it. A good Pokemon, I guess I should, I should specify this. Um, I don't have a formal definition for what makes a Pokemon good, but it like it should feel like right when you use it. It should it should be doing it should be doing stuff, right? And it shouldn't be it should be helping you more than it's hindering you for sure. It should be giving tools that you don't already have um, as a as a very bare minimum. So this is what I was talking about with X Drill earlier, in that he says it should be doing something for you, and it should be doing something that you don't already have. I have X Drill in my team specifically so that I have an extremely fast Pokemon if I need it. Um, my team right now is Incineroar, Tyranitar, Rillaboom, Milotic, and Dusclops, and so most of them are trending on the slower side, and Rillaboom and Milotic are mid-speed mid speed tier. Um, and Extra Drill is mid-speed tier without Sand Rush, but with, with Sand Rush, it's the fastest thing in the format. Um, it's faster than Regieleki um, when Sand is up. So it gives me that... Ooh, it gives me that really fast uh, Sand option if I need it, um, if I need to go with it. So, um, yeah. Um, what being a good Pokemon does not mean is is popular. It's not synonymous with popular. I'm not saying you can only use Pokemon that are metagame, because a lot of times there are good Pokemon that are overlooked, such as Mamoswine when it won the World Championships in 2013. No one considered Mamoswine very good. It won Worlds. Even last, uh, you know, last format, um, when we had re uh, events, the U.S. Nationals Mega Medicham got second place there, which is a Pokemon that everyone was in agreement was more or less a bad Pokemon. So, um... I don't necessarily think Mega Medi Medi is a good Pokemon, to be clear, but like it might have been a good call for that tournament. And there's like a lot of times where um, Pokemon are overlooked, right? Like Pokemon are we kind of have like a metagame established, and then like people don't necessarily branch out outside of that. So it's totally okay to look outside of that. It's As you're saying, it's it's very it's all right to look outside of the metagame, but especially um, in Wolfie's case, it's. Uh, because the metagame is so new, it's generally better to stick to the Pokemon that are really, really good in the metagame right now, and that, that seems to be what he did. As we said, we kind of went through, and he doesn't have any Pokemon outside the top 20 in usage in the metagame currently, so very interesting tactic, but it seemed to work for him so far. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that some of the Pokemon outside of that are good, and some of the Pokemon outside of that are bad. Um, and that matters because, like, by putting Ooh. bad Pokemon on your team... It be Flickering a little bit. I don't know why that's happening. Why am I flickering? It's very difficult. Okay, you know, it's much more difficult to win than it would be with otherwise. So, my philosophy going into this tournament was I want to use only Pokemon that I can say confidently are good, which is why the team before you, you can know, you can see the team before you. Uh, As I was saying, the this early into the metagame, Wolfie wanted to use Pokemon that were, he was very confident were good, and all of these Pokemon have been proven in this metagame and in previous ones like Dusclops has been proven as a solid trick room setter and we got to use it all last format and it was extremely good as well at what it did and it, it's very good this time around as well um but yeah this is public so I don't feel bad sharing it even though I'm still in the tournament um but yeah you can see I have weakness policy Moltres Life Orb Glass Trier Regilecki with screens uh pressure Eviolite um Dusclops pressure because this is an open information tournament so you never need frisk it's just a waste of time um Misty Sur he says open information there. Um, open information is essentially like you know all the Pokemon and all their moves. So you can see the opposing trainer's whole team and all the moves and items that they have. Uh, Frisk is just an ability that... Why do I keep flickering? Frisk is just an ability that... Um, it... Frisk is an ability that it shows you the items upon entry. So it's not really needed in an open information style um, tournament. Fex Feeny and then Gosalpa's Kurtana. And I'm confident that every Pokemon on this list is, or like on this team, is is good. And so when we were building, we were considering Pokemon like Mamoswine, who in theory should be really strong, right? I'm not saying right now if Mamoswine's a good Pokemon or a bad Pokemon, but I will say is that I wasn't confident, right? When I was talking to Aaron, I wasn't like Mamoswine is a good Pokemon, or I wasn't confident Mamoswine is a bad Pokemon. But because I wasn't sure, I didn't want to use it. Same with Nihilego. Same with a couple, uh, a couple other Pokemon that we considered. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, basically, why did I choose to be so ironclad with this in this tournament in particular? Because there's been plenty of times where I've used Pokemon that are, like, outside of the scope of good or bad Pokemon. Um, um, I just want to say, real quick, um, he... Well, he's a tester. He likes to test teams a lot and kind of build interesting teams. I won't say wacky teams, but teams that are outside the metagame, he tends to 
Trentord, and he, and he likes to use off-meta Pokemon and do well with them, and he builds very, very good teams around them. For instance, in the last format, Series 6, no one really used Jolteon until he did, and Jolteon, he took to number one, and it, it was really a carry. Life Orb Jolteon was really, really strong for him next to Weezing because it turned off abilities, and Jolteon could just do a ton of damage through that. But like he said, with the metagame being so new, he kind of stuck to what he knew was good. And so I think that's a good starting place. Um, if you want to get into competitive Pokemon, that's what I've been trying to do. I'm using what I knew was good in Series 5 and what seems to be decent again in Series uh, 7 or VGC 2021, uh, more or less. So, And the reason is that this is a really early metagame tournament, right? Like, the format's been out for, like, two weeks, and people are still really figuring stuff out, and there isn't, like, an established, like... Um, people, it's, it's basically just, like, very, very open at the moment. And, um, like underexplored i think is the right word so by using pokemon that you are like confident are gonna like be like good and doing good things for you um you end up covering a lot of ground right um you're not gonna cover everything with with like you know you've never been able to counter every team with with what you have however um normally good pokemon are, are partially good pokemon because of their flexibility right like a pokemon that um like my Lodic, for example which like is at least if you're not running coil hypnosis stuff or whatever um it's pretty good if your opponent has like a lot of intimidates or if it gets like a, a boost somehow but if it, they don't get a boost then it's a pretty like pretty much like non uh it's not like a non-entity right where it doesn't really do anything um and so for that reason like milotic isn't a pokemon you can bring in every match or if you do bring it in every match like it's not going to be strong sometimes um whereas a pokemon like tapu fini is almost always going to be good right like it, it would take like i, I will lead tapu fini into electric type plenty you know often right like i think it's totally fine to do that um because its stats and typing are so good, and, and what it offers is so, is like so uh, versatile, right? So the reason I'm running Milotic on my team is because, like he said, there's unless you're running Coil Hypnosis stuff, mine is mixture. So mine has Protect and Hypnosis, so I can just fire off a Hypnosis um, into into really really strong Pokemon that can't really hit it. So Milotic is kind of my Metagross Glastrier counter. Um, Glastrier can't hit it for super effective. Metagross can't hit it for super effective, and so it's going to take hits from both of those. Pokemon, and so if it gets off a, um, it gets two shots basically to hit a 60% accurate hypnosis onto this Pokemon. Um, if it targets down Milotic, if not, then I can, you know, it can, it can get a couple more. So having hypnosis on Milotic is really strong, but it also has Muddy Water and Ice Beam to counteract the two main Intimidate users in the format, which are Incineroar and Landorus. So mine kind of serves a hybrid purpose in that it uses hypnosis to stall out people's Dynamaxes, especially those that are weakness policy that I can't, the rest of the team can't really deal with that well. Um, but it's also very good as a sweeper if I get a boost from Intimidate or a, a stat lowering max move. So it, it operates as both in my, in my kind of team. So all these Pokemon are at least somewhat versatile and they all have like a lot of things going for them. Um, Whereas a Pokemon like Mamoswine, for example, like, it's, again, not sure if it's good or bad in the long run. I have a feeling it might not be great. Um, but it feels like if Mamoswine's not hitting things for super effective, then it's, like, kind of not as valuable as you'd like it to be, uh, if that makes sense. So, um, because the metagame was super open, is super open, and because people are still figuring stuff out, the advantage of using, like, of being really strict with this rule, where uh, sometimes I'm more lax, but the advantage of being really strict with this rule in this tournament was that I felt confident that by taking only good Pokemon, I would have I would be able to cover kind of the wide variety of teams that I could face in the tournament. And I played a wide variety of teams. I played Sand, I played Sun. Um, I played a whole bunch of different stuff, like to Hard Trickerum, less Hard Trickerum, you know? Um, and I, I only had to play five games. So um, I feel really confident about like the call that I made going into this tournament. I'm not sure if I'll be able to advance past, um, you know, from 16 down to four, but I will give it my best shot. But I thought this could be interesting to, for people like watching and who are interested in Pokemon and um, interested in getting better because like this is my thought process going into this tournament and so far it's worked right i'm 10 and 1 in games and like i at least made it to top six um again just before we go to an ad i wanted to say it's interesting that he's played a bunch of different teams with this team and this is why a team like this kind of works against um specific teams and maybe off meta teams is that it the meta Pokemon are most of the time they are the meta because they're very very versatile and they can deal with a lot of different teams um the top meta Pokemon in Series 5, for example, were Dragapult, Cinderace, Whimsicott, Togekiss, and you could use them, especially Togekiss and um, Whimsicott, you could use them against almost any team, and they would still be very, very good. Um, same with Moltres here, same with Regieleki and Tapu Fini. All of those Pokemon, and Glastrier as well. The whole team that Wolfie built 
is very, very good against pretty much anything. Um, obviously, there's specific counters. For instance, Incineroar can really can really hit Cartana hard with you know with a Burning Jealousy or with a Flare Blitz, but it has Tapu Fini to counter that. So the team kind of it covers for its weaknesses, and there's not really a glaring like, oh, if if I run into like say you're running Sand, for instance, like I am, if you run into a Torkoal and they switch in, then you're in trouble. It, it doesn't have any glaring weaknesses like that, um, whereas other teams kind of do. So, yeah. And I'm top 16 on the winner's side as well, which is nice, because this is a, you know, double of the 11th bracket. Um, so yeah, like, this this philosophy worked a lot, like, really well for me, and um, I would say that, like, this is, a, this is a rule that's okay to break sometimes. Like, you could try using Pokemon that aren't necessarily good, and it can be fine, but especially as you're new and as you're getting, like, as you're learning Pokemon, I think this is a good rule to follow, because until you can, like, learn to distinguish, like, what Pokemon that are not popular have the potential to be good on your own, it's probably good to stick with Pokemon that are more conventionally accepted as good like i don't think you would if you show these pokemon to any vgc player i don't think they would say any one of them is bad right pretty much across the board um so yeah that's pretty much it um that's kind of all i have to say about about the the topic uh, i hope this is interesting to you um i didn't record any of my games from players cup because uh it's harder for me to play when i'm recording so um just before i close this off i just want to say right there at the end um he did record his players cup one games and he d ended up losing i believe um, it just shows you how much better he is when he's in full focus, um, full focus mode, Wolfie. He's, uh, he's an incredible Pokemon player, but, um, again, like I s it, when you look at this team, most teams are going to have at least one of these Pokemon on their team, and I think that's a really, a really big strength of Wolfie's team here that he's built, is that he's just put together really six Pokemon that you can kind of put onto any team. You can throw a Kartana onto a team and not have it, you know, as long as you have a water type to cover it. Or, or something to cover for a fire type weakness, then you're good. Um, same with Regieleki. If you have a flying type, then you're good. You can throw Regieleki on a team. You can throw Dusclops on a team. You can throw Glastrier on any Trick Room team. Um, or as a Trick Room counter. Um, you can throw Tapu Fini as a good support Pokemon on any team. So I think it's really interesting that he's kind of put together six Pokemon that you can kind of throw onto any team, and he's put them all together, and I think that works really well for him. If you guys want to um, see more videos like this in the future, then let me know. I'm definitely going to be doing some more, but if you guys want to leave me some suggestions for, it doesn't have to be Pokemon videos, any sort of YouTube videos that you want me to react to um, in the future, leave them in the comments down below and I will take a look at them and uh, possibly react to them. But yeah, um, I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.